morning. We have lots to do, lots to do. But uh, first, I just want to show a very good video. Chuck Norris doesn't paint with a brush, he paints with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so there's that video, and then there's this video, my giant wall painting robot. And so we're going to obviously take this painting with a paintball gun seriously and just see about the costs and maybe how to do it. Uh, the thing is, looking up the cost of paintballs, paintballs are not as cheap as I would have expected. So for 2,000 of them is about $50, and that's sort of the price that I've seen. So if you get 2000 for $50, um, and you want a 100 by 100 image, that's 10,000 pixels, and you only want one color, then you're going to be spending $250 alone on paintballs. So that's a little expensive. So... And 100 by 100 picture is like pretty small. Like that's uh, like you can't really make anything out with just 100 by 100 pixels. So now let's okay, now let's say Now let's say that we wanted a standard 1920 by 1080. So we're going to do 1920 times 1080. Oops. Okay, then this divided by 2,000. Okay, that's the um, um, number of this we have to buy. So then you multiply that by the price, and you'd be spending $50,000 just on paintballs to make a single image. So, but there must be a way to get this to work. And this is a black and white image. So you'd really have to multiply this by three. So you'd be spending... $150,000 on paintballs just to make a single image. But the thing is... God, I really want to be able to do this though. But the pricing is just so high. Let me ask ChatGPT, see what suggestions it has. I want to build a gun. <laughs> Wait, let's not start with that. That shoots paintballs and has two axes of rotation. The goal would be to fire at a canvas and produce an image with the paint balls. Um, I'm seeing fifty dollars for two thousand of paint balls, which is far too high to make an image with any good resolution. What are some ways? I can get around this. Let's see. Yeah, we'd have to call. Yeah, we could reach out to people. Homemade paintballs. Oh, 
Okay, well, I think... Okay. Let's watch a video. I mean, it's just compressed air and then the ball forms the clog and then when the pressure gets too high, right? That, that would be my expectation. Let's turn this back down a little. Hey guys, Lord here. Today we're going over the basic operation of the Tipman A5 marker. Although the diagram shows an A5, yeah, see, this is the can be applied to the X7 blowback, 98 Custom, and U.S. Army line of markers such as the Alpha Black, Project Salvo, and Carver 1. They may appear different on the outside, but on the inside the guts are almost identical, and you may often find that the parts are interchangeable from marker to marker, depending on the model. Some of you may already be familiar with MEPS animation, but I've painstakingly converted it over to Flash so that we can get a better understanding of the mechanics of the marker. So let's begin. Once a tank is connected to the ASA, or air source adapter, air will enter into the gas line and through the ASA plug. Air now enters the tombstone, where it is funneled into a narrow channel prior to entering the valve. It goes through the valve or ring and washer, around the valve spring, and stops at the valve plunger. The plunger creates a seal against the valve seat and prevents air from continuing through the marker. At this point, it is pressurized and ready to fire. The marker won't fire until the rear bolt, or hammer, is released by the trigger. The hammer waits under tension by the compressed drive spring inside of it, but is held in place by the trigger sear. The drive spring pushes on the hammer and in turn pushes on the sear. The operator squeezes the trigger, which rotates around a pin and lifts the front of the sear. The sear also rotates around a pin until the lip of it clears the hammer. Once that happens, multiple things happen simultaneously. The trigger sear is pushed backwards by the sear spring and is reset, where it waits for the hammer to return. The hammer is connected by a linkage arm to the front bolt and the entire assembly moves together in unison by means of the drive spring pushing on the hammer. As it moves forward, the entire assembly builds up momentum. The front bolt is pushed forward and in turn pushes the paintball into the detent. The detent folds downwards out of the way and the paintball passes through the barrel adapter into the breech end of the barrel, followed by the front bolt. At the same time, the hammer enters the power tube and the o-ring creates an airtight seal. The hammer then strikes the valve pin on the valve plunger. It pushes the plunger forward and breaks the seal inside the valve, allowing the air to escape. Air travels in two different directions at this point. Firstly, it travels backwards into the cavity created by the walls of the power tube, the face of the hammer, and the face of the valve. This oh, does it push the thing back? back gas. This air builds up pressure inside of this cavity and combined with the valve spring, begins to reset the marker by driving the hammer, linkage arm, and front bolt backwards. Secondly, the air splits into two halves and turns 90 degrees on both sides of the valve. We'll refer to this as the propellant gas to differentiate it from the blowback gas. Here, the air yet again diverts into two directions. One way is through the side of the marker where air powers the cyclone or response trigger, both of which operate on the propellant gas, not the blowback gas that pushes back the hammer. The other way has the air turn 90 degrees and channels it forward through four grooves located outside of the valve. If you have an older style A5 valve or a low pressure kit valve, there will be two large grooves instead of four smaller ones. Once past the tombstone, the air converges in a small pocket of the power tube where it is then funneled into the power tube small extension, which allows the front bolt to slide back and forth. The air travels through the extension, through the front bolt, and finally pushes the paintball through the barrel. Now the marker has fired and needs to reset. At this point, the hammer continues traveling backwards until the valve plunger creates a seal against the valve seat again, cutting off air supply to the marker. Once the hammer o-ring clears the end of the power tube, most of the gases expelled throughout the back of the marker come from this small cavity. The momentum of the hammer continues to drive it backwards and compresses the drive spring. The that is so beautiful. That's elegant to use the, the propellant or the gas to, to propel it and reset the... the catches the hammer and resets the sear. The marker is now ready to fire again. And that's it. This may seem like a complex operation, but if you open up your degas marker, study the parts, and move the assembly back and forth, you'll begin to understand what's going on. Hopefully this video will help in explaining the marker's operation, and will help you with things such as assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. Stay tuned for future videos. Dude, that's fucking hype. Okay. So, it's not exactly what I thought. I thought that...
Yeah, it's it's actually more complicated than I thought it would be. Uh, naturally. Uh, Alright, we'll have to think about this, but I think... I think, I mean, if I wanted to just write text, then it would be easier. Um, okay, but now we should say what kind of resolution can we actually get? Because this is the ideal resolution, but it's pretty likely that we won't even be able to achieve that because of um, how much paint is actually in it. And so what we would do is we wouldn't actually buy a gun. We'd make our own gun. And I think that that would be... Because the thing is, we need this whole thing to be electronically controllable so that all the code that drives the, all of this it is completely automated. Um, okay, so let's, let's say... Um, okay. Oh. Let's just see what it this says. Type of images you want to create. Building the gun mechanism. Firing mechanism, paintball storage. Right, so what I was initially imagining when I was when I was out for my run today was that I would have I was thinking three for RGB, but watching the uh, stuff made here video, you actually need four, you need CMYK. And then you just have four drums and you could load whatever color you wanted. Or, alternatively, you just have one drum and there's uh, some mechanism for maybe but just be, the human does it. Swaps out which color you're using. Um, but it, it's looking like from a cost perspective, it's likely that mm -hmm. I'll only be able to use one color. Or, yeah, well, I don't know about that. Building the gun mechanism, components, challenges, ensuring accuracy and consistency. Yeah, so I was imagining, like, probably need some sort of uh, calibration system because it's every time you set it up, you're going to set it up differently. Um, so I'll have, and that's something I don't really know about. And I was imagining just running it off of a pie, but. Pies are kind of hard to get. Maybe I'll get an old pie. Maybe Arduino, but I kind of hate programming in Arduino. I'd rather just use Python. I Yeah. Testing and calibration. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly what I was talking about. Dealing with inconsistencies in paintball flight. Interesting. Wear and tear on equipment. Cost management. Artistic expression. Scaling and presentation. Uh, I don't care about that. So, okay. What's the average volume of paint in a paintball, and what is its dimensions? No, 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 no. It's not full. Paintballs are not full, right? Is caliber inch? Oh, okay, so they got the same answer. The diameter of the barrel, however, in the case of paintballs, the caliber number usually closely matches the diameter of the paintballs themselves. Okay, so let's just say that we have this. Uh, 
Okay. So let me just write that down. Uh, two point five, or we'll, we'll use the real number. So let's just say zero point sixty eight inches diameter. Or a ball. Then we have, yeah. Well, did it did it use um? Oh, nice! It used Python for that, dude. This is so sick. Four thirds pi r cubed equal to roughly two point seven milliliters of paint, assuming it's full. I imagine that they're not full. I need to take a piss, get some water, and I'll return. Yeah, I don't see any getting around using paintballs. Like, how else? Because you can't just shoot paint. Like, it's a, if it's in a liquid, it's just going to get everywhere. You're not going to have any resolution. Um, it's hard to estimate. Okay, so help me estimate the amount of paint per whatever square foot. Okay, um, what kind of pressures are we dealing with? No, 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 no. What? Why do you have to use CO2? Can't you just use compressed air? What's HPA system? Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why they would just... Because presu presumably you have a tank that's connected to. Okay, so... Um, and the thing is, because I have a compressed air tank. Well, my dad has a compressed air tank. And 
I'm guessing it gets up to high enough pressure, but the volume is pretty big, so maybe it can't handle. But it's this big metal thing. Um, all right, shut up, shut up. So then, what? How do we estimate what kind of speed we can get? Okay, yeah, so just tell me for a given pressure, oh, interesting, the dimensions of the gun's barrel play a role in paintball velocity. A longer barrel can increase accuracy but may slightly affect speed, while the bore size should closely match the paintball for optimal. What is a bore size? Uh, okay, the inner diameter. Paintball size and weight. Standard paintballs are... Does caliber have anything to do with the weight? Because we, we need to know the density of it too. To calculate the mass of a ball. But actually we, we need more than that because we also need the... Yeah, so maybe we could just look up how much it weighs. Three to three point five grams. Okay. Estimating the velocity. Estimate the velocity of a paintball. <laughs> I don't really understand what PSI even means. We need the volume of the air. Pressure times the volume. Huh. Interesting. So we're going to need a secondary chamber then. Because we can't just like open the whole thing. We need to control that. So we're going to need the big tank, which is pressurized. Then we're going to need a smaller tank, which actually hooks up to the barrel. And then we're going to have a stopper or something. I don't know how they do that. And then this, the trigger actuates the stopper. Uh, the barrel dimensions affect how the pressure is translated into velocity. What is that called? Um, I mean, we don't even need it to, we don't even need it to go that far, but we, um, we, we probably need to make it go fast enough that it'll actually break. Wow, that's pretty fast, dude. 
Is that true? How fast does a paintball gun shoot? Okay. Oh, wait. Wait, hold on. Yeah, I, okay, yeah. That's way closer to what I was expecting. It's almost traveling a kilometer a second, dude. <laughs> that would kill someone. <laughs> oh, okay, it said that. Yeah, because that would be totally insane. Um, paintball deformation. Chronograph. I don't even know what that is. Oh, cool. Okay. So, how are we going to determine the pixel size? Right? Let me just ask it. The speed at which the paintball hits the canvas affects the splatter radius. Yeah, that's that's what that's what I was thinking. Is we we there's a there's an engineering balance of like we want it to be high enough velocity that we don't have to deal with too much arcing due to gravity. But we also want it high enough that it'll break but not break fast enough too hard to, as to like splatter but a paintball drips right Okay, so now, we need to think about, um, All right, we'll put a pin in this and we'll get back to uh, CAD. Okay. Good to think about.
I don't know about this whole switching thing. It's such a pain to do this on a breadboard. But maybe we should. What transistor do they use? Where's the CAD? They always have the CAD at the end. Those are all pots? Okay, so we need to look into how the switch works because we I don't think we got to that last time. Okay, if we assumed that the diameter of a pixel is an inch, <laughs> the canvas would be 160 feet by 90 feet, dude. That's insane. Yeah, that's not happening. That's crazy.
And I mean, we have no way of controlling this. Well, No, you guys are idiots. Gotta hate Reddit. Dude, Reddit is such a shit show. Always just ask me to log in every time you do anything. Video. Two? Wait, are we good? It will actually use a pen with this. Run. Shot. Funny you should ask. The loser of the challenge has to hold up the tablet while it's shot with this. Whoa. Fully loaded paper gun. I have a really bad handwriting as well. Yeah. The winner can just do it. Alright, let's look at the I think we should use ah. oh. <laughs> Yeah, it just appears immediately as soon as I press the trigger. Like, oh. <laughs> and then just you. Ah. <laughs> Look, it hit me in the finger, look, watch oh, it, the finger. Yeah, finger. That little shell of paper really oh. hurt. <laughs> Alright, so this one that's uh, that little shell of paper. That's a lot really of paint. <laughs> that looks like a three inch diameter. Alright, so this one that's at uh, five thousand frames a second, slightly closer in. And let me just add, I'm even more scared than I was last time. <laughs> you ready? Yep. Yep, keep your eyes open. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is 200 and a bit times slower. Check out my open eye. Look at you, like, oh, my eyes are open. Ah! <laughs> That's quality. Oh, and it's that still bit that will hit you. Went on my finger again. <laughs> that finger is like the catchment. It still just explodes so quick, doesn't it? Yeah, it's quite a lot of pain. <laughs> it's like, oh, and it's that eyes are open. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's quality. Oh, and it's. So I think it's possible to write text, like very wide text. Catch me. Did you do it again? Alright, let's get one more central because I'm not happy with that. That's from a really close distance. Check it out. Didn't break. I didn't think it would. It's good. Gorilla's hard at work. Is that what it is? Gorilla's? In the glass. Like microscopic gorillas in the glass. Really? Just going like. <laughs> nice. Okay. All right, so let's put a pin in that. Let's go back to CAD. Whew. 
shell thickness and fill quality. FPS? What does that even mean? Oh, interesting. That's it's a cool thing to test. <coughs> so maybe you want to actually hit it really fast. Varying viscosities of the fill. Okay, so I want to go back to the loop switch part. How does this thing work? Duplicate it again. Well, I guess we don't really need that one. Whatever. So we want to go down to the loop. was a loop mode for our envelope. Here's how we'll implement that. You can pretty much turn any regular envelope into a looping envelope by using this little circuit. You just patch it in between output on the right and input on the left. What? And the envelope will read trigger continuously. To make that happen, we'll configuring a yet another op amp as a Schmidt trigger inverter, which you can think of like a what? It's a, it's a, it's a one-bit quantizer. Just say that. Whenever that output drops to zero, the watchdog will re-trigger the envelope and then sit back and wait until it's time to strike again. This works because a Schmidt, trigger's inver a Schmidt trigger inverter has two thresholds against which it compares the voltage we apply to its input. The three resistors up top, or rather the relation between them, sets those thresholds. In our case, the bottom threshold is set at zero volts. While the top threshold is placed at around eight. So when the input drops to zero volts, so when the input drops to zero volts, the op amp's output will jump to 12. Let's see. Then once the input rises above the 8 volt line, the output will drop down to minus 12 volts. 
Now you might have noticed the diode and pull down resistor. If we use our envelope's regular input, the maximum output voltage depends on the set attack and sustain levels. I don't really get that. Oh yeah, classic. Classic, classic, classic. Okay, I don't fully understand the implementation of the Schmidt trigger inverter. But no matter. Okay, let's just do it. I hate that you can't undo in wire mode. I'm going to need to look for a switch. So we need to find a footprint for a switch, so I guess I'm going to go look for a switch.
All right. And then we'll do the layout, and then we'll etch these two boards. I might want to add a dual VCA because the VCA has just one, but I definitely have room for two, but then I got to redo all the layouting. We'll see. I think having a dual VCA would be really nice because then... You could change the amplitude of the LFO and the oscillator itself. I don't really have an LFO, but we're going to see about that. Okay, I'm going to go look for a switch. Okay, found a switch. Okay. Can we get a data sheet on this thing? Jesus. Yeah, this is single pull. What does double throw mean? 
that's what it is, right? Double throw. Okay. This will be cool. God, this thing is disgusting. Okay. So we're done, right? We did it all. Oh, we didn't do this LED shit. Oh my god. Classic. That's the kind of thing that drives me crazy about this program. I like this one's footprint better. Three millimeter. Hmm, that should be fine. Let's see. Um,
What does that mean? I hate that you can't copy that. It's so annoying. I feel like I've Googled this before. I feel like this is not a problem. I feel like if I ran the electrical rules checker on all my other stuff, it'd be fine. Or, I mean, it would give me the same error. Okay, I'm curious if I, uh, retard. Okay, so we're done with the schematic, I guess.
It's insane we're gonna need two op amps. Two quad op amps. I mean, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to fit this in here. Oh yeah. Wait, we're not ready for that. I hate that sound. It's so fucking awful. Okay. The switch footprint will also be a three pin. Same with the... Um what is the purpose of that one? Mm, that is, yeah, that... Okay, so all three of these are... Damn, I don't think we're gonna have room. This is a pretty complex board. All these resistors are the same. But we're going to do... Okay, dickhead. Can't I just put it in there? Okay. Okay, where are we at here? Where is this? After the switch to there, okay. Yeah, you really need two monitors for this. This one goes to plus 12, so that's the 100K.
that's R6. That? Seriously? Plus 12 to, yeah, okay. 100K and 100K. The order here makes absolutely no sense. That's a 1K. Where is that? There's so many 100Ks, I don't even have that many. I have to go scrounging. Is that everything? Hmm. Which one is that one? Hmm. That's a 1M. Okay, now we can do this. Control A. Wait. Hmm. Maybe doable. So now we write J1 input. No, I want all the J's. Okay, J2 power. J3 out. J4 inverse out. RV1 is the, um, sustain. RV2 is, um, attack. And RV3 is decay. Or release. Okay, let's do it. So we don't use the left side. Oh yeah, wait, and then the thing that we always have to do.
Oh, cool. Okay. J1. J2 is what power? J3 is output. So what I'm doing is I'm just... I sort of know where the front panel is going to be and I don't want wires to be tangled, so that's what I'm doing there. So, maybe we'll have attack. No, wait, no, that's sustain. So we want attack. Release. Input. Sustain. I think that's what we want to do. Or that. Okay, then what else we got? The switch. Okay, we need to decide where the switch is going to go. This is not centered. Okay, how the hell do we start this thing? Come on, man, we gotta get this done. I want to, I want to finish this. Okay. On the other side. Oh man, oh man. I don't know long time. Oh man. I wish I could listen to music without being freaking copyrighted. Okay, so I'm going to print this out. Okay, and then we can start to figure out what we need to do here. Because... One, two, three... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so the loop switch, right? So maybe we actually want to do, because maybe we want to have the outputs. So maybe we want to do something like this, where the outputs are down here connected close to there. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to switch these two. But then I also want, I probably want this one to be there, this one to be there, and this one to be there. Why? Actually, no. I think we want J4 to be the 
Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to leave this as is, connected to J4. We're going to move this. Oh, fuck. Um... I forget, how does this go? Wait, is this just the buffer? Okay, then that's obvious. So we're good there. What? Okay, just, all right, let's just do a sweep of all the op amps. Okay, looks good. All right, so then what that allows us to do is um, free up. We just need to update PCB. Right. It was just a reconnection of stuff. So now the switch is close to U1, and then the outputs are all on U2. Okay, so I'm going to go get the printout, and we can start to arrange this. Everybody loves the sunshine. My life, my life, my life in the sunshine. Okay, let's just start with input one. I I I don't have no methodical way of doing this, honestly. Maybe the input, because the input is connected closely, so maybe we should switch these. So I'm going to take this. Move it. I want to move both of these down. Okay. Now I want to move this down. We need to move both of these down. So they could route from the top. Okay. Now let's just get the C1, D1, and R1. In. So this is just grounded. So just do this. We could actually put this here. Uh, okay, fine. We'll put it there. Wait, 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 wait. We can't do that yet. We need C1. We'll do this. We can put it up here. Then D1. Then R1. Okay, so if we were to do this... Then this, then we'd be all good, and then this goes down to there. And then this just goes like that. And then what happens to, okay, the one is the output, so I guess we'll be on the back plane there. Um... Okay, so let's get that second op amp 
And that just goes like this. I guess we're already trapped. What does this go to? Okay. And then here, so we do page down, and then here we go like that. That's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. I think. But then we need to make sure that we, uh, I think we should do this. Okay, so we don't have clearance there. So maybe we do it on the back. I actually want to get something. IC holder kit thing. Oh, what the? Okay. okay, we have lots of 14 dips. Oh, no, those are. Here are the 14 dips. Okay, I like the. I like the. I like these. Relatively, well, actually. The leads aren't as long as maybe I hoped they would be. Yeah, that's not ideal. Uh, maybe they're about the same length. I think they're a little bit shorter. Right, if we're gonna do this. I think they're about the same length. And we have 15 of those, so we're pretty much set. God, that smells awful. Okay. Uh, what, if, what if we did this, though? Oh, we're breaking rules? Okay. How do we expand, is it E? No, what is it? Expand selection. U. All right, so what if we did this? Then could we get this in there? But, okay, I think that should be okay. Okay, where's my pen? All right. So then, uh, let's get, I hate how I did these resistors. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. R2, R2 and R3 make sense. Okay, so let's just do this. Okay, R2. Okay, why don't we just put this here? Uh, we'll probably need to get under it. Maybe we'll go around it. What does three connect to? Three, I guess it'll be blue. So if we can route through it, what does one go to? One goes to this diode. So let me do the diode then. Okay, so where's D, D2? Oh, this is a nightmare. We could do that, and then move this guy down. Because then we could go page down, we could go like 
this. This goes to the switch. We can route through the switch, right? Can we go through these things? Let's see. No, you see, you don't have room to go through them. So they have to be on the edges. Okay, what does this go to? Just to that diode. But that diode, okay, so let me just, so we're gonna undo that. Um, okay, what does this go to? This goes all the way, right. Okay, so let's just do R2 and R3 then. Dude, I have no idea how to do this. Do we need to ground this guy? No. We need to ground this guy. What does this go to? Right. Okay. All right, that goes to pin six. This goes to plus 12 volts. That's kind of a pain. We don't really like that. We want to be able to get a trace through there, probably. But if we do that, then maybe we can't get a trace through there at all. Honestly, 1.2 is a little much. I could probably decrease it to one millimeter. I mean, look how thick these traces are. What the hell is up with that? Okay, so let's just get that other diode in the the sustained potentiometer that's rv1 we can't have that there we need sustain over here oh geez no that's okay all right so okay so what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna have to move these over here and then sustain is here i don't really care about the layout honestly like the layout is not the most important thing to me. The most important thing to me is just making sure that I do the routing properly, I guess. Okay, so let's get that D3. Just put this there, I guess. Okay, that dog goes there. Pin two takes R four. I guess you can go through it. This goes to ground, so we can loop that around. Perfect. I guess that's fine. We need to move this here. Where does this have to get to? This R4 needs to get to this diode. Dude, I think that this is going to be unsat, bro. Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, so I think we have the first block sort of done. So let's go to the switch and go on to the envelope core, which is the attack and release. Okay, so first we can tie nine and eight together. I don't care what, um,
Okay. We're going to do the loop switch later. Wait, did I switch this around before or after I printed it? I think it was before. Yeah, right. So this is actually U2567. And then this is U1. Four. Wait. U one D. Okay. And then this stayed the same, and then these are all grounded. Okay, so we have this. All right, let's get the. Okay, so now we need that resistor, which is R five. Can you see the connects to the diode? Okay, yeah. Honestly, I might put it down here. All right, let's just place it. Where does this go to? This goes to nothing. So then that goes to there. This. Okay, so D5 and D4. Okay, that makes perfect sense to me. And D5. Could go there. So we get this. 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 And then threes aren't even connected. So maybe we should actually do, maybe we should do this. Actually, I wonder if we could change these to two pins because we're only using them as variable resistors. Even though they have a pot, we could, I think we're allowed to do that, right? Like if I go to the schematic, hey, what's up? This is totally a bot, guaranteed a bot. Account created this year. Oh, I guess not. What's going on? Okay, what are we doing here? We're changing the footprint. So let's see if we can make these since they're, let's see if we can make them two pin. Because then, I hate it, oh, this works, there we go. Oh, thanks, you too. Okay. Um, so then we could put the two pin here and we can move this one up. So I think I'm gonna do that. All right, so let's just change and copy this. Put this here. Why? Okay. Um, okay, so if we update it, does it just do it? Okay, nice. Yeah, I feel like that's a lot better. We can save some room to route from the back. And then we could actually put this maybe like up here since what is that? That's not grounded, but it is shared to the same net. So then let's see, this goes to pin one. And so what if we did this? Well, we can't do that, but we could do this. Okay, that seems pretty nice. And then we need that cap to ground. Okay, but then what we need to do, what does this go to? That switch, yeah, so that switch needs to get routed to the... Well, 
Okay, wait. Let's try to put in this last diode. Let's just put this here for now. Because, yeah, we need... So we need this, this. What does that go to? Okay, so... Pin 2, yeah, goes to the non-inverting input. Is there any advantage to staying on blue? Okay, let's get this here. These get tied, but then what does it go to? It needs to go to... Oh, really? Oh, I was under the impression that no, I thought we switched that. I thought we said that... Hmm... I think I might need to switch that back, because... Shit. Um... Because maybe we... What is What does this go to, then? That goes to the switch, but we can just put that down there. Right, so the looping stuff. Do we actually want to put the looping stuff here? Gosh, darn it. Maybe we switch it back. I gotta think about it, because... No, why, why, I, maybe I'll just do it, because the amount of components on there is probably too much for me to even fit. But, okay, so we need to switch this back. So our, um, oh wait, I forgot to give follow. I, I don't, I give follows to bot, to non-bots. but I turn off notifications. No streams? Huh. Suspicious. Okay. All right, so we're moving this. We're switching these again. Okay, so this goes X, Y, and then we want to do this. Move. Okay. And then here. Okay, let's update the uh, PCB. Okay, so now I think, so the outputs I was going to put here but I think I might actually want to, let's see. We could probably move these down slightly. And then I could fit J3. In here, like that. So then this would still go to there. This, right, we still need the, okay, so we, which resistor is that? It's R10. Okay, I think that's okay. We need to go page up and then here, and this is just buffered, so that's okay. And that's our output. This is grounded. We could get ground out from here. Um, we don't want to box ourselves in with power, though, because we need to think about powering U2. But honestly, this is going a lot... You know what's funny? Because, like, when you import the components, it looks like way more components than it is. But then you, like, start doing it, and you're like, actually, this is going to fit. Did Okay, so we grounded that. We got that. This goes to there, which is good. So what is all this stuff 
This needs to go where? Right. So that's important. We should leave that in. Because what is that? That is pin 12. Right, okay. But there's a lot we need to connect this to. So we're probably going to have to route from under then. So we'll probably have to go page down, something like that. All right, so let's try to move. The op amp up. Okay. Let's do that. It's crazy how much space I have. Let's do that. So wait, which one's plus minus? This is plus and this is minus. So I want to route minus from here. Seems kind of dumb. Routing is so time consuming, man. Okay. Wait, but we can get blue out from under there. So why don't we put R9 here. You can move this up a lot. Maybe not. Okay, R8. It's gonna go, yeah, it's here. It's just a simple feedback path thing. R15. Easy peasy. It is, however, going to be important to uh, do this somehow.
Oh, I like that. I've never noticed that before. Okay, so we have all of J4's done. But we need, um, oh, we need this transistor nonsense. Where are we gonna put that? The status light? Oh wait, did I, I put the, I picked the wrong footprint here because Or should I just delete this status light? The reason for that would be, how the hell am I gonna mount it? Actually, if I use acrylic front plane panel, then we're good. So I'll do that. Okay, so we have R9, we have R8. Now we need the two resistors that connect to pin three. We need these guys. You can't do that. Okay, let's just put them there. Let's do this. Oh, right, we need to do this. Having two layers is so clutch. Single layer routing is like a crazy Sudoku game. Lexi. Okay. Where's R11 at? All right, let's do the looping Schmidt trigger thing. So pin five, where is that? That's this. No, oh, this goes to, oh, perfect. See, on the one hand, I like that, but on the other hand, that seems like super inefficient. Like, why does that seem bad? Mainly because you just have this big ass road down the middle. OK. 
Okay, let's get R12. What does 7 go to? 7 is... We gotta get 7 now. Wait, is that a diode? Yeah, but we want the diode. Oh, right. Okay, we need to move that diode back out. Because that diode is not... Oh, shit. Okay, well, in that case, we need to take this. We need to move this in some more. Then I want to move this out. And then what we do is we get... Can we get ground from somewhere else? Where is this ground even going? Can we just delete this? And let's just say we get ground... I don't even hate that. Kind of ugly. All right, so what are we doing? We need to figure out this ground, this, oh yeah, this diode and resistor to ground. So D6, where did we, do we even move it? Okay, let me get this back out of here. Okay, R13 needs to get handled. Where does seven going? Se yeah, this is dumb. Okay, delete. Okay, let's get R13 which is in the feedback path. That one goes like this. So then we can go boom, boom. And then the diode connects to but the problem is we still need to get this thing all the way up to the switch. Wait. Is that just because this needs to be... Oh, yeah. But no, this is what we need. Wait, we can do that? I was imagining we needed to go all the way around. Okay, so let's leave that for the router. Okay, where's that resistor to ground? R14, where's R12? R12 needs to go to ground. Oh, cool, so I think we just put that. Okay, so maybe we wanna switch this because this goes to here, but we could probably. Right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this out of here. We're going to take this, we're going to move it and rotate it. We're going to put this here. Then we can just ground this. Or whatever. We do this. This. That could go with the red page up. Two layers is sick. You don't even have to think, you can just route. 
Okay, I think I need to go page down and then get the diode out from that way. This is kind of gross. Single pole, double throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Single pole, double throat. What? Twitch will mute, but uh, YouTube, YouTube doesn't mute. It just gives you the copyright warning. Okay, so we're almost done with this fang. What else do we have? Oh yeah, R14 goes to ground as well. We need that. So I think I actually messed this up. No, this is okay. Okay, what did we forget? We forgot the transistor. Oh, we forgot this capacitor. Do we have room? It just goes to ground, right? What's its purpose? Maybe we can just do that. What else is there? Okay, this diode. That's the LED, right? Can we get that there? If we can get that there, I'm happy with it. Now this, I imagine, is going to be more... Okay, so, all right, first pass, let's get all the tracks done, or out of here. Now, auto router, do your thing. I think I should do this. And then move. And then we can move this up a whole lot. Let's see, is there any other weird stuff? Okay, I mean, this is looking pretty good to me.
I don't know about this transistor diode nonsense. This is a little weird to me. I don't like that plus 12 volt thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't like this trace at all. You can't get this, can you get this through here this way? Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do Move this transistor here. Move this diode here. All right, I think I gotta go inside really quick while the gardeners do something. Alarm. Okay. Where did the base go to? Mm. Okay. Then I also want to move everything except for this down just so we have a little bit more clearance there I'm gonna take a second to stretch and hydrate and shit. This looks a little goofy. Why don't I just put this here? And then take all of this and move this like here. All right, so global deletions Tracks and vias. Route again. Is 
Is that a via? What is that? Why would it ever need to do this? Dude, it's doing some silly shit right now. I've never seen this. Yeah, backed itself into a corner. I might be fucked. I wonder what I did wrong. I mean, bro has so many vias that... Bro literally has so many vias. Did it route completely though? Because if it did, I'm willing to just take, take it. Bro, Widow, we has so many. So we didn't end up routing ground over there. We ended up routing ground here. Which is fine. There's one via. Guys, I think I'm ready to send it. I feel like this is good. I think I just want to do... That. No, wait, maybe one more. All right, so are we sending it? I think we're about to start etching, brethren. Okay, and then our... Um, then I guess we want to just add mounting holes. Being able to do two layers is so freaking clutch. It's gonna be a pain in the ass to get these 14 dips in. I think, do I have any room at all to increase their size? Because, okay, I mean, if this via is the only reason we need to get Oh, it's because of this ground. Wait, what the hell is this? This is to get the switch over there? Uh, yeah. That's kind of annoying, man. It's kind of annoying. 
So the only thing, really the only last concern before we look she etch this is should I try to edit the footprint of the dip 14s to make the, the uh, let me grab one of my existing boards and see how painful It is. I don't remember it being particularly painful. Um, okay, should we try to do the dual VCA thing? Okay, let's just see what happens. Wait, was that pad? Yeah. You can't bulk edit pads. Diameter. Okay, wait. So here's what we want to do. We don't want to do this like this. You go here. I kind of like that. I kind of like that a lot. Give me just a little bit more copper. But we also want we want that we need the whole diameter to be slightly big. Wait, that doesn't look right. Is that even going to work? I mean, it says it's the same width, but see how much wider. Look at that, look at how small this oval, this um, rectangle is. What? What? Is it just M? Can I do Control Shift M? 
It's shorter, though. I mean, yeah. Hmm. And then at some point we need to up, update the uh, power supply schematic to include fuses. But, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about these fucking power supplies. Okay. Hey, what's the difference between these? I'm inclined to try this. But how big are the holes? We need to make the holes a millimeter because... Okay, so let's... Okay, we're going to try something new. I'm going to duplicate this. that? What does that say? Oh, what is that? Wait, can we get it all three on that? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty close to what we want. I would like... Okay. I can't bulk edit all pads.
Okay, fine. Fuck it. I'm tired of this. Okay, we'll go through the numbering later. Pat. I'm sure that it'll say... Oh wait, we, we should leave. Oh my god. Wait, 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 am I retarded? Oh my god, I'm retarded. We're taking a gamble on this. We're taking a big gamble on this. Okay, so let's go here. Alright, let's see how this is going to work. Pad 3. That's okay. That's okay. It should be... That's okay. That error is fine. Does it just do it? Is that going to work? Can we go to inspect... Design rules checker. We just need a reroute. I think we can do this. Maybe we made them too big. I think it's fine. I think it's fine.
This is going to take forever though. Bunch of freaking clearance violations, guys. Oh, come on. You can do it. Oh, brother. Maybe we made him too big. Wait, did we get it? Let's open up design rules checker. So we have one via still. Which I'm totally fine with, by the way. Like, I'm okay with a, a via. A via every now and then. Where is that? Okay, yeah. Right, but it's just these on use. See, they're all you. Wait, actually. Yeah, but they're all related to you pads. Okay, I'm fine with that. I mean, we were going pretty crazy on the clearance. I think it's like a mill. I think it's a millimeter. No, 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 it's 0.8, it's 0.8, but it's still like pretty big clearances. But wow, it took two hours. That's annoying. Okay. I guess I'm going to call that finalized. Let me think about it from a panel perspective. Oh, the wrong one. Let's think about the panel. So we're going to have, oh, I put my notebook away. J1 is, J1 is the input square wave or whatever. RV1 is sustain value. J3 is output 1. Okay, oh, okay. These two are the varistors.
Okay, so attack, release, and then inverted output, and then the switch. I don't hate this. I love the auto router so much. Okay, so for this one, oh, come on. Dude, I have so much room to add the. Okay, let me commit this stuff. Okay. We need to redo this. We're using almost all the right footprints. We want to reuse, we want to use our new dip 14. We need to move U1. This we probably want to do something like this. Then Somehow like that. And then we're good to go. But we need to fix the schematic. Okay, should I really do this? Okay, I'm gonna do it. So, Okay, here's a VCA. Instead of grounding these, we're basically going to do this. Oh, wait, let's unselect this, unselect this, copy this, paste it. Hmm. 
Well, this is going to be a pain. Okay, well, and then we still got to do the filter. But I want to mess around with the filter on the breadboard because I feel like the resonance was messed up. I don't know what I did wrong, but I was able to get the filter kind of working, but there's a lot of problems with it. I'm also really running out of 100k resistors. All right, I'm gonna quit being a bit. Let me look at the spreadsheet. It just duplicated everything, that's perfect. All that work gone. Oh, wait, 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 we forgot something. No, bro, don't crash. Don't crizzash. Okay, fine. Do we, did it, does it still have all my, fuck, okay. Okay, we do that. Is it too bold to send it on this new dip 14 thing? We're going to find out. Everybody loves the sunshine. Am I still live? Yeah, okay, I don't know why the Twitch notification went away. Uh, okay, so that's good. Let's open up our PCB. Dude. See, that seems like so many components. Okay, so I'm making the executive decision. Oh, shit. The, this bad boy. It needs to go like this with plus 12 facing upward. 
Okay, then we need our... Okay, I'm going to print out this schematic. Then I want to make my little list of the J's. For all of these knobs, we're gonna also have to look up what their values are, because uh, we don't have that in the bomb. Because mounted components, we sort of lose that information because they don't actually go into layouting. So, okay, let's get the top done. We can get a knob. Okay, so it'll go knob. Is that enough room? We can afford to move this down a little bit. so annoying it doesn't actually give me in it gives me in multiples of the All right, come on, here we go. Whatever, we could do that if we wanted. We could work backwards.
R10. It's kind of stupid. I just have no basis of theory of like, how do we actually do this? Like, it's just such a difficult problem to do it optimally. I feel like if we just place them, like we're not gonna... This is so painful. R8, R9, R7. Oh no, we got these flipped around. This is starting to be my least favorite part, man. What does RV1 go to? I don't even know what that's for. Honestly, the transistor amp, I just don't even understand. Make it a fucking fool of myself. Wait, we did this all wrong. I totally boxed myself in here. Son of a bitch.
Jeez, these clearances are bogus. I don't know how we're going to get power to this thing. Oh boy. Okay, so... Okay, let's start over. Okay, that's about as tight as you get it. I think we probably have room to also... Okay, now we get our first transistor. R8. We'll put them in the middle. How's that? Then we can do R10 and 11. I don't know how that's possible. This R15 thing is crazy town. It's possible we could do... It's possible we could do this. Oh, really? I don't hate that. You can't get there. It's 
still no. How much do you need to move this fucker? But then I should be able to move this. But this is all bogus because where's ground? We don't even know where ground is. Well, we'll have to figure it out. Oh, shit. The CV stuff is Im impossible because... We need to get all the way to here. Okay, well, if we don't care about having right to left for input and output, Then we could try getting these guys over here. It makes no sense at all, but sorry, wait. <laughs> then you'd have like inputs and an output. Where are we going to put this RV? Oh, boy. This one's a doozy.
Okay. So then we can put this way up. Input, output, some control. Oh, we could have also just flipped it, but okay. We might need to flip it for the bottom one then. Meaning this way. I might just do the whole thing. S not symmetrically, which is kind of awkward, right? I guess it doesn't need to be symmetric because we actually have more room on the bottom because we don't have power. I mean, we don't have like a power connector. So, let's see what we're up to. We have the voltage divider, then we want... This is just ground. Okay, so then why don't we move this guy like that? Where does this go? Take this to R7? Okay. Look, we have all of this to do for ground. So if we just did that to make sure that then R8, we have no problem doing it like this. Okay. Uh, twelve and thirteen. Okay, so I think we should figure out the second transistor then. So twelve and thirteen. Basically, we can go just like this. Where does this go? Okay. Then this goes to here, which goes to here. And this goes to, okay, to ground, right? So divider. Then this goes to, okay. Actually, we probably don't want to do that. We probably want to have this. But then we want to do... that. Ground can be out. And then this goes to there. But then you have plus and minus still there. Okay, so we did all that. Now we just got to get to the op amp.
Okay. Now we gotta get these guys. Wait, is that pin one or two? Pin one goes to R8, but this goes to way more than that. Oh, brother. This is just a painfully diff difficult problem. It's like people playing Sudoku. All right, well, whatever. 14 and 11. 10 and 15. Oh, there it is. I don't know about all that. And then you have this. It's a doozy. This front panel is going to be an absolute nightmare. Okay, so let's then do the CV processing. Can we do that? R7 is an important one, I guess. Because we got to get it all the way over there. Hmm. Oh, nice. Pin 3 is just grounded. That's pretty hype. I don't know what we're going to do with this. Okay, so we have the opportunity to get ground in there. But how are we going to get plus and minus? Okay, I think we can do it. If we tried to do this. Can we get it in there, though? Hmm. 
No, we kind of need it in there. We can make it red. But then ground is kind of fucked. Where's our ground? Hmm. Maybe we're okay. Okay, I feel like we're getting there. Where's R4? Near J5. R4, R5, and R6. Okay, so that's all... Pretty perfect, actually. Okay, bro, I'm like stressed out right now. Doing this routing stuff is painful. All right, so I think I'm gonna do this. I think I'm going to actually switch. So, actually maybe it's already switched. So eight, nine, and 10 are on that side. Which means what? Right, so it's already flipped. So what that means... Is that we'd put J... What's the corresponding J4? It's J9. We'd put J9 here. I don't know how we're going to get ground. If I just press V, does it give me a via? No. I think we'll be able to figure that out. I don't want to redo everything by flipping it. I mean, these definitely need to be over here, but, you know, you can't win them all. Okay, but there's...
There's probably something I'm missing with the top one anyway. Maybe not. Okay, if that's the case, then here's what we're going to do. Put this down here. And J2 is CV, so our second CV is J6. Maybe what I could do is not print it mirrored. I feel like that'd be very confusing though. No, we need to do the transistors first. I learned this. You have to do the transistors first. But I'm not gonna. Boom! Twenty-nine thirty. we can just put these Okay, J6 is here. I think I should probably start with... Where's J7? So it's... Okay, so it's the, it's the corners to the middle. This is pretty bad. Okay, now we need these two, this divider, which is 17 and 19. Where did 18 go? Did it do something funky? It like interlaced to them. I don't really get that. But this probably gets to more stuff. Okay, that's fine. Does this one go to plus 12? Hmm. Oh, that one goes to... Goes to there. Maybe we flip them around. Because then J9 No, I think what the answer is That this just needs to be around here So let's get this Alright, we are 
nearing the end. Well, we don't even know. Honestly, we don't know. It could be that this is all wrong. Okay, so 17 and 19 are in. 23, yeah, why did it interlace them? I really don't like that. 23 and 25 go to the transistors. Oh, okay, so we could put them there. Oh, and that's grounded, so that's perfect. Okay, so this is all the CV processing resistors. What about 18? 18 is also, right? We need the second transistor. R7, fuck. Wait, we might be able to do this. Look, I feel like I'm hitting a wall. Okay. Uh, so do we have the two transistors in? So these get, okay, so what's the equivalent of the R7 on this one? It's R24. It's an important uh, resistor. What does this go to? This could go anywhere. There's plenty of room. Oh, nice. Well, actually, no, wait, we have ground from there. We don't even need this trace, so we can do a whole lot more since we we could do ground. I guess ground, oh, that's actually clutch. Okay, so we could totally get rid of, what is, that? is that the ground one?
We need this, but we don't need that other one. Bada bing! Okay, so we have ground. No, I want ground this way. Wait, did it just like undo it all? I, I wanted my ground like this. And then we have positive and negative, and then we can use this to branch out from everywhere. Oh, shit. Wait, we can just do... That's easy. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. Bro, we are ch being chilling. And then we just use blue. Dude, two... It's, it's actually impossible to do anything with a single layer. All right, so I feel like power is kind of coming together. What do we need? We need uh, CV processing resistors are all good or what? This goes a plus. Could we get power out and around over there too? I guess we could, there's nothing stopping us. I guess we need a via. Well, not necessarily. Well, we'd, we'd go blue, then red. Or we could make this wider. We could do this. <laughs> well, no, you need a via. You need a via. Via via. Via via. What if we just did this, and now all the parts are in? Where does this go? This goes to plus and minus, so... Honestly, I'm curious what happens if I just do this. Super low effort, just place them wherever. The amount of labor that has been spent on doing this before people made auto routers is probably way too high. No way. Easy. Now we have a dual VCA. With zero vias and insane clearances. Dude, this thing is the best. You just don't have to worry about anything. This is so hype. How did power get routed? Ground goes to there. And it goes under. Oh, baby. <laughs> this board is not well done. I guess these gardeners aren't coming, so I guess I could start to... I really hope they don't come later. We could... I guess we could do the filter, but I'm really kind of burnt out of... KiCad for the, or at least KiCad PCB editing for the, for the minute. Dude, look how bad this board is. This board doesn't even make sense. Like, we have two copies. Why is it that they're not symmetric at all? Like, where did those two resistors go? The R3 equivalent? Where's R three? R three goes to J two, which is J.
J6. So I guess I just put all the resistors there. Okay, so we need to add mounting holes. I forgot to add mounting holes. So, envelope, we just want to do... without connection. Two point one millimeter. Oh wait, we forgot this. They're the pilot holes, but they're also the mounting holes, I guess. Well, no, that's not ex that's not entirely true. They're just the pilot holes. Or the, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> That's cutting it really close. It's fine. Okay. Um, I guess I'll get the ironing board and we can just start. Maybe I'll stop the stream. Let's see, how long is this? Because I think the more streams, the better, if they're more atomic. Um, my main concern is... All right, maybe I'll make some food.
Okay, peace. I'll be back.